Now it's time for the second phase of our create a template from scratch demonstration. And that is, we will work our way through our mockup document and start replacing its mockup values with our tagging elements. The first thing we want to demonstrate is using the field tagging element. I will delete these extra fields here, but as you remember from earlier, we said that the field tagging element will be bound to expression over the report data source. And this was one example of that expression. This was example of the simplest case and the most commonly used case, and that is bounding directly to the field. I will delete this extra list that is here. Let's uh, show a few more examples of binding the field tagging element. For example, I will bind to purchase ID. Here it is. And remember from earlier that it has value 004. If I want to add a new line here, while the cursor is within the field tagging element, if I click end on my keyboard or if I go with the cursor here, it's not okay if I now click enter, add one enter, because what will happen, I will still be within the field tagging element. And that's not what I want if I want to keep adding new elements. That's a common mistake. So I must go outside of this field tagging element. I will do it by clicking once again on my keyboard and or the right arrow. This is maybe not so intuitive, so let me show you another thing. While I'm here, I will click this icon here, show tags. It will show me where the tags are. So now while I'm here and if I click end on my keyboard, I will see that I'm still within the field tagging element. So once again, end or a right arrow will take me outside of the field tagging element, but it would be the same if I was, for example, anywhere else and I clicked right here okay now if i say enter i'm now in the new line but not within the field tagging element and that was my intention so what i want to do i want to add once again this same field so i will say field tagging element i will bind this to perch id again i can click here and then scroll below until i reach this field i'm looking for or I can type the first letter of that field and now I have this perch ID. I will again double click. But in this case, I wanted to use some expression, maybe to put some prefix in front of this. So I would say right click, edit expression. And here below we have some available operators and functions. You can do a lot of things here. There are many functions uh, available. This It's not the purpose of this really basic training to teach you those things, but think about what you want to do. What is this type of the field? It is string field. So I will search for the available uh, functions under the string node, and I will see that there is concatenate. Many of them you know from Excel, for example. So if I want concatenate, I will double click. You see it, it appears here. Only I would do something like this. Here in front, I would put what is the prefix. I need a comma separated list of uh, strings I want to con concatenate and description will tell you that and the syntax. So here I want to put, for example, a fixed prefix, for example, I don't know, prefix minus and comma separated list. So now when I say OK, this will be the result. So this was a demonstration of what field tagging element is doing. So let's go through this document and replace some of these fields in the header and here in the word header with the, by using the field tagging elements, we will bring now the content from our report data source. So first thing, instead of the purchase order, we want to use a document title and I know that it is here in the parameters. So instead of purchase order header, I want a field tagging element and they want to bind it to, now here I need to click to another section. 
99% of the cases you will need the data from the main data. That's why it is automatically selected. But in this case, I need to select parameters and point to document title. Now I got again the purchase title, purchase order title, but this time it came from here. So I can, for example, say that it is for training and I will see that it will be now used for my document title. Next thing, instead of this purchase order, I will use this purchase ID that I used also here. So I will say field and point to purchase order header, purchase ID. We have it here. Then instead of this date, I will point to purchase order date. And here on the left side, I see it previewed in a default format, but I can apply some format string. With the time, you will learn few format strings that you will be regularly using, and you can type it directly here. But until you do so, click these three dots. And now this time, our tool knows that this is a date time type of the field. That's why these format strings are offered. And I will use this small d as a short date format. Notice it is presented in the culture of the selected preview language. If I modify it and say that it is, for example, German, it will be now presented as day.month.year. I will move back to US English. Here, for example, you would say, instead of this first uh, Part, I want a vendor, here are fields, vendor name and vendor address, that's what we want to show here. So instead of that, field tagging element and bind to V, vendor name, and instead of all these lines, bind to vendor address. Here it is. There will be situations when, for example, as here, you have two fields, but on the left side, you have three lines or more lines. And now it is clear, you know, that this uh, first one is vendor name and the, the, the remaining two are vendor address, but sometimes it won't be that clear. So it's useful to use this little trick, select one of them and give it some color. For example, here, red color. And now it's clear that from this one, this line is produced. Then obviously from this one, this line here is produced. Let's go to the header. Instead of this company name, I want to use again the field tagging element and bind it to this, this here, what was added by Docentric to the general data. So again, here field tagging element bound to general data, now current company name. And now, obviously, this sample data contains Contoso, but it could have been docentric, or in your case, it would be whatever comes from your legal entity in runtime. Instead of all these fields here, I want uh, address, so I would use field tagging element and bind it to general data, current company, primary postal address, address. Okay. And in a similar way, you would go and work your way through all these mockup values and replace them by the field tagging element bound to the corresponding fields in this general data. And that would be your job. With this, we demonstrated how to use the field tagging element. And let's move on to description of label tagging element.